周一長談，我哋又返返嚟，咁啊請到嘅貴賓呢，係我哋麥德莊廳長，係我哋 B.C. 省嘅財政廳長，同大家傾下二零一五年佢平衡預算嘅一啲理念同一啲做法。Mike, thank you for coming back.、Uh, the, I want to follow up on your earlier statement. Is that the MSP that we、uh, they have collected actually compared to other provinces? That collect through income tax, our amount is actually much low. Some of the to some of the provinces, we are actually lower. But is that enough? Is it sufficient? No.、Uh, in fact, it it comes nowhere near、uh, enough to cover healthcare costs. So,、uh, the medical services plan premiums that we collect from people, if we put them all together,、uh, it accounts for about thirteen percent of what we spend on healthcare. So.、Uh, I mean, if we actually, if we actually sought to、uh, cover all of the healthcare costs from MSP premiums, it would be a, a massive、uh, increase. We don't,、uh, but we do think it's necessary and appropriate that、uh, everyone makes a contribution who can to the cost of delivering the, the service. And we have the greatest healthcare system、uh, in, I think, the world. Our health outcomes are. Fantastic! We we lead the country. We,、uh, notwithstanding how much we spend, our budget is growing at a smaller rate than anywhere else in、mm -hmm. Canada. So we've done very well at finding efficiencies. And here's something else,、uh, BC, that I think is、uh, important for people like me、uh, to remind folks of: we all have a, a responsibility to look after ourselves as well. And、mm -hmm. uh, so when we promote Smoking cessation.、Uh, you know, you smoke, you're going to get ill, and you're also probably going to disappoint your family、mm. because you're going to be ill. But you're going to cost your neighbors a lot of money, so don't smoke. And I also realize that although、uh, the the province is getting more is having policies that give people more convenience to get alcohol, but the promotion on alcohol is really actually the worst. Uh, the drug use,、uh, I think that is also、uh, helping to lower down the cost. Prevention yeah, is most pre important. Health, health prevention is where we need to continue to to focus. Start with children, healthy food. We do a fruit and vegetable program in schools. We're promoting participation again. We're uh, uh, providing a tax credit to parents for enrolling their children in recreational activities. A tax credit for purchasing sporting equipment. A tax credit to teachers. Those are new, new、uh, the、uh, tax credits that you've introduced this year. Those are two new tax credits that we've introduced. We're promoting、uh, a tax credit for teachers、mm. uh, who volunteer to provide、uh, coaching and, and guidance in activities. So preventative health care and teaching our, getting our children. Used to be, the the the, the drug was the television. Now that now the drug is the computer, right? <laughs> We got to get kids、yeah. back outside doing stuff. Good. Now let's get to something.、Uh, the, the figure it also shocks me a bit. Is that、uh, from all your budget,、uh, the fifty-seven percent of your budget goes to payroll? That is a huge amount of money. I think the perception is that although the the unions have been fighting for for、uh, for for pennies. And at the same time, you have you have been successfully during the negotiation to hold them kind of tapped it at, 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 in, at, to a certain amount. But the top managers, is there anything to control the the, the labor expenses of the top managers' salary? BC, I want to take advantage of the the question you posed by first of all agreeing with something that not a lot of people uh, happily uh, you have recognized. One of the reasons we have a balanced budget, unlike every other province,、uh, there are two reasons I think, and, and the first reason is、uh, we've controlled expenditures, and the only way we've been able to do that is by working with、uh, unions that represent 200,000、uh, public sector workers. And it hasn't always been easy,、mm -hmm. uh, and it hasn't always been a happy、uh, state of affairs. Oh, we all know it. <laughs> Strikes <laughs> comes along with Strike it. Strike comes along, and unions act in. The best interest of their members, but we've secured settlements.、Uh, it has largely been free of、uh, labor disruption, though not、uh, entirely. But those workers deserve credit 
for having settled in many cases, in most cases for negotiated uh, settlements that are zero or one percent or mm -hmm. maybe one and a half percent. So they deserve a lot of the credit for where we are uh, as a uh, as a province, and it's also why when I when we published guidelines for senior managers, and and by the way, within the government proper, there's been a wage freeze at the management level. But when we see in some agencies dramatic increases, I've I've heard, for example, may I spell it out? Yeah. The two organizations that gets a lot of negative response from the population, from the citizens, is BC Ferry and TransLink. Can you con have any jurisdiction where you can do something about it? Well, we publish guidelines. There are others. I can tell you uh, in a few instances where there is a, a, a direct ability. Um, I have directed that the wage levels be, be rolled back. Um, each organization's relationship is slightly different. But I can tell you, I have not been shy about telling um, agencies, uh, boards of education, where employees have taken a 1% increase and the senior manager has taken a 25% increase, that that's inappropriate in my view. Can you repeat 2.5 or 25%? 25. Yeah. I mean, wow. it, it, is, it strikes me as, in those circumstances, terrible leadership. And a terrible example when we're saying, as we have been to employees, um, we need we need your help in controlling costs, and your increase this year is only going to be one percent. Mm -hmm. And uh, the superintendent of a school district, uh, for example, is uh, receiving a twenty-five percent wage increase. Uh, that's not on. Why can they do that? Well, the relationship in that case is between the the board of education and the. Uh, uh, and their employee, uh, the superintendent. But it's YBC, when I hear uh, some, not all, not all, but when I hear some uh, boards of education say, oh, we can't find any savings in our administration, I say, I don't believe, I don't believe you. Mm -hmm. I think there are, if we want to dedicate more funding, as we do to the classroom, then we have to do everything we can to reduce the administrative costs associated with uh, a school board uh, and so uh, that's we're zeroing in on that minister peter fassbender is uh, zeroing in uh, on that and you've raised other organizations we are challenging these organizations to find administrative savings to share services there's no reason uh, i won't continue to pick on school boards uh, but if you've got two uh, school boards side by side they don't both need a payroll department mm. They can share one payroll department and uh, find some efficiencies there and save the taxpayers some money. Although you said you're not going to pick on the, the, the education, the, board, the uh, school boards, but uh, the fact is that uh, the, in the, you have increased the, uh, the budget for, the, for education, for the K-12 educations. But at the same time, you have some uh, criteria that they have to find certain percentage. I think it's uh, uh, the 12 or something percentage of efficiency. Where do you think that they can get in addition to uh, the sharing services? So we've divided the budget in two. And by far the largest portion of the budget is what we call education services, classroom services. Mm -hmm. That budget is going up over the next three years, $500 million, mm. a significant increase. Um, to fund the contract that we signed with teachers and support workers, to provide $73 million for the Learning Improvement Fund that goes directly into the classroom services. But you're bang on when you say, we've also said, as we have to other agencies, we've said to school boards, look, um, we think you can find efficiencies. We think you can partner with one another to reduce your overhead. We don't think your senior managers should be getting a 25% wage increase. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, there are savings. I'm not saying it's easy. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's easy. And I have to pay tribute to, uh, to some boards of education who have done very, very well. In fact, I should point out uh, a superintendent in, uh, I believe, Surrey, who was offered an increase. And now this is real leadership. Said This superintendent said, thank you, but I'm not going to accept that because all the people that work for me aren't getting, are getting zero or one percent. I call that leadership, and I, I applaud that 
education leader. That should be on the news. Yes. Yep. It is now. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're news. Yes. <laughs> okay. The temporary personal income tax rate of 16.8% uh, for, uh, the, for those who earned over $150,000 have been eliminated. And uh, the opposition party has been fiercely attacking and they say that you only get benefits for the richest. And yet the poor, the, 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 the underprivileged people, uh, you, you have chronically disregard them. Can you explain how this tax cut comes from? Well, I'll deal with it very directly. First of all, in all the years that I have spent uh, in Victoria, and now a number of them as finance minister and as other ministers in other posts, it's really the first time I've ever seen an opposition uh, take as the central point of criticizing the budget a decision that was contained in a budget two years ago. This is old news. And they voted? Well, two years ago, uh, two years ago, uh, BC, uh, when we were still trying to balance the budget for the first time, uh, I said to folks, look, we, we don't have enough revenue. Uh, we want a competitive tax structure. We have that, but we need some help. And for those people who make a little bit more, we're going to ask you to give a little more. And we're going to ask you to do it for two years. Two years. And we put it in the budget. And the NDP at the time ridiculed it. It said this was crazy. And look, you're, it was a bad idea. Why are you doing this? They ridiculed it. Now it's two years later. The, the law has set out. It will disappear. It's not in this budget. It just disappears because we, we ask people... We said, we need you to contribute a little more for two years. It's now expiring at the end of this year. Well, the, the NDP op opposed us when we introduced it, and now they're opposing us when it disappears. They've got to make up their mind. I call them the New Democratic Pretzel Party, because they're all <laughs> twisted up. They can't make up their mind about what they, uh, they believe in. What they also don't want to talk about is the tax relief that we are providing to middle-income British Columbians, and low-income British Columbians. You won't have uh, the NDP, for example, acknowledge that we've also increased the threshold. Uh, when they were government uh, 14, 15 years ago, if you made $18,000, you paid income tax, hundreds of dollars in income tax. We've eliminated that. And in this budget, uh, for people who make less than $19,000, they don't pay any income tax in British Columbia. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a real benefit. We've provided now uh, to uh, low and middle income families uh, a, child, uh, a child tax uh, support benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, $660 a year. If you've got two kids, it's over $1,200. When your children turn six, if you have two kids, each one of them gets a check for $1,200 to be put into a registered education savings plan. The federal government will provide some matching money and over the course of the next 10 years, that will grow and by the time your child is ready for uh, uh, trades training, vocational school or university, you've probably got the first two years in tuition paid off. Mm. Those are real benefits that we're now in a position to give because we've been responsible with the provincial books. The mm. NDP doesn't want to talk about that because it doesn't fit with their narrative, but it's all true. Thank you very much. I have another long list, two pages of questions, but uh, time is up, and thank you very much for sharing your time with us. But I do wish, before I close the, 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 this interview, is that uh, all the benefits that is introduced this year, that the citizens can take advantage or can use it, I think we need to promote and communicate it better. The, all the benefits will not only exist during your speeches in, in Victoria, but they actually, all the accountants, all, they, all the families, they can know that this is the things that they can work on. I think that's very important. BC, I agree, it's, uh, which is why it's such a delight to uh, be able to come back on the program with you and why I hope, uh, and I hope on the screen uh, here at the bottom, we're able to post the, uh, uh, the website where all people can get the information that they require to access those benefits and, and those programs. Uh, great to be on the program again. Yes, we will. See, the website is right here. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
今年二零一五年嘅財政預算案有啲咩新意思，同埋佢嘅理念喺邊度？我哋非常多謝佢。周日長談同大家深入時事話題，今日到此為止。我係林碧佳 ，B C Lee， 下次見。Bye.